Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokegame here with my uh, final week of the UCL regular season um, team breakdown or team preparation video for the Tulsa Talon Flames. Of course, I am coach of the Bronze Bear Ticks. Now this week, like I said, we are taking on the Tulsa Talon Flames and we are taking on Cuddle of Death or Kristen. Now, Kristen has a very cool team, I'm not gonna lie. Um, definitely a bunch of threats on that team. Now to help you guys understand why I need to win this game. Uh, I need to win this game in order to make playoffs, but not only that, I need to win this game and either Nappy, Shady, or Patters has to lose because I am currently 11-3. Uh, there is a four-way tie for second place right now. We are all 11-3. Myself, Nappy, Patters, and Shady. Now, one of them needs to lose, and I need to win in order to make it to playoffs because if we all win, because Nappy and Shady have both beaten me, uh, they will go on ahead of me. It's something like that. I don't know. It works something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But I think that's the way I've been told it works. So not only do I have to win, but my rivals, I guess, have to lose, which is fine. You know, I don't care <laughs> as long as I win. <laughs> but in any case, uh, the way I like to do my team prep videos and the way I like to build my team, basically, I want to make sure that any combination of six that I use can take on any combination of six that my opponent can bring, meaning if uh, Kristen wants to bring Latias, Heat Ran, Mega Houndoom, Jellicent, Ferrothorn, Salamence, or if she wants to bring Seismic, Totem Muck, Liopard, Salamence, Ferrothorn, Jellicent, um, I will be able to deal with all, any, all in any combination. I do that because what if I don't prep for a Pokemon and I'm like, oh, there's no way she's going to bring that Mon, and she ends up bringing that Mon, and because I'm not prepared for it, it beats me. But in any case, now this week I did build with uh, CV and uh, blue so shout out to them thank you for helping me and uh also bkc helped a little bit just a little he was in the chat in any case but uh looking at kristen's team let me just adjust this really quickly the way you guys could see a little bit hold up i'll just put this right here on the side yeah looking at kristen's team um latias just has a field day ah uh, <laughs> what Weavile just has a field day versus her team. Um, it hits Latias super effectively. It can hit Heat Rant and Mega Houndoom super effectively with uh, Low Kick, Jellicent, Knock Off, Ferrothorn. Uh, it checks Salamence with its Ice moves. Even Seismic Toad does not appreciate Knock Off, so I Ice will crash. Neither does Muck. Liopard is bopped by any Ice move. And then even Galvantula does Snore and Rizion. Basically, Weavile. Zef is my go-to Pokemon for this game, 100%. It was the first Pokemon that I thought of bringing uh, this game, and definitely glad that I, uh, you know, am bringing it. I have no regrets in bringing this Pokemon, um, looking over her team one more time. But uh, we're bringing Life Orb Weavile with enough speed for Mega Houndoom, which is the fastest Pokemon on our team. So we outspeed Mega Houndoom, which is Houndoom after Mega Evolves. Uh, we do outspeed that by one point. We have max attack, that way we can maximize the damage and knock off Ice or Crash, Low Kick, and Ice Shard Dew. And then 72% uh, defense is just there, uh, just in case I'm rather low and she has like Sucker Punch on her Mega Houndoom. If you choose to bring Mega Houndoom, she doesn't have to, she can bring regular Houndoom. And uh, I can live it because of that, but uh, this basically checks everything on her team. As long as I play it well and prevents uh, Sticky Web or even... Or even put sticky web on both sides of the field this will do well and the reason I say put sticky web on both sides of the field is because it will allow me to um, basically balance the field and you'll see how I put sticky web on both sides of the field um, as we keep going um, with the team but uh, originally uh, we were talking about running a beat up life orb weavile we tested it it actually Oko's Galvantula uh, with a life orb with these Pokemon that we do have however the possibility of a Scarf Galvantula came up and um, that scared us and that just made us run nice with Crash over Beat Up because if it is Scarf Galvantula, there's no point. Uh, we would lose Weavile 1. It's like a 50% chance to Oko it if I put those EVs into defense, uh, Special Defense and um, basically a 50% chance for us to die to Bug Buzz and we would potentially lose Weavile, a big threat to my opponent's team. So I definitely didn't want that. Now, the uh, next member on the team that also puts in a lot of work and has... The best coverage all around versus a team is Manaphy. Now we are going with the offensive tail glow set with Scald, Shadow Ball, and HP Fire. Shadow Ball hits Latias for super effective damage. Same thing with hitting Jellicent as well as Seismitoad, while also hitting Salamence for neutral and um, also Dustnor for super effective. While HP Fire stops like her 
one counter <laughs> to this thing being um, Feral Thorn. So once the tail go up, HP Fire Oko's that. Uh, it also hits Verizion for an okay amount of damage, respectable amount of damage. And uh, obviously Skull is just there to power through for Hound Doom and uh, Heat Ran. And it even uh, checks Muck, which could be a problem if it is cursed. So after tail goes, Skull will do a lot. I do have that chance to burn. And uh, I just gave it enough speed for regular Hound Doom because that's the only Pokemon that I was outspeeding on our team. I could have potentially outsped a Timid Salamence or a Jolly Salamence. However, I do have HP Fire, which forces me to run an imperfect speed IV. As you can see, I have 30 speed IVs instead of 31. So um, if this was level 100, for example, I would be 327 speed while Salamence is 328 speed. So there's no real point in running that much speed. Just enough for her Mega Hound Doom before it Mega Evolves. So just enough for Hound Doom after. Uh, before Mega Evolves, and um, just max special attack, and the rest is just dumped into defense as well as HP. Menifee has a lot of potential versus her team, especially with Shadow Ball. Uh, this is basically the way that I can get the best coverage versus her. I could have ran Energy Ball, I could have ran Ice Beam, yes, but this is the way to get the all around best coverage for Manaphy to sweep. Now, next Pokemon on the team is going to be my Tornadus Theory in form. We are running the Assault Vest Tornadus with just enough speed for Mega Hound Doom. Um, 244 uh, HP and 52 speed def with an assault vest mean that I can take rocks plus fire blast maximum damage plus sucker punch maximum damage if she is running like a naive sucker punch plus fire blast uh, mega hound so I can switch in on rocks plus sucker punch plus fire blast so I mean I can switch in with rocks are up if she goes for fire blast and then goes for sucker punch after that I will live it 100% unless she gets a crit uh, and I do have Air Slash, which does about 30-40% to uh, Mega Hound Doom. Heat Wave hits Feral Thorn, as well as hitting Verizion for some damage. Of course, I do have Air Slash as well, like I said. And um, Grass Knot is just because I wanted to be able to hit Seismic Toad. Seismic Toad could have been an issue if it is a Rain Dance variant. So having Grass Knot is nice to hit it for a lot of damage. And then U-Turn is just there to give me momentum. I didn't want to give a knockoff because I want to be knocking off on my Weavile. So, like, if Dust Nor comes and I don't want to knock it off, I want to keep Weavile's knockoff at full power. So... Uh, this thing can wall Latias, this thing can take special hits from uh, Verizion, this thing walls Verizion, takes Life Arts hits, uh, and just can check a lot of her team. Now, originally we also had Icy Wind over Grass Knot, but like I said, I wanted a way of hitting Seismitoad. If it was a Rain Dance variant and Grass Knot just came to mind. Now, we're bringing Blunder this week, all DNO. As you can see, we have Wish, Flamethrower, Magic Coat, and Ice Beam. Now, part of the way we are building this team is not to give Ferrothorn any free turns at all. So, all six of these members can hit Ferrothorn for super effective damage. Flamethrower is a 2 hit KO. Um, Wish is just there to pass the support to Manaphy as well as um, Fabio. As you can see, I do have him. And then um, Kabalia, my bulkier Pokemon, if needed. And then the uh, EV spread that we have allows. Um, Audino to uh, take plus one outrage from Salamence after rocks and hit it with an ice beam just in case it is a Yachi Berry. That way, Weavile can revenge kill. It also allows it to uh, take hits from Galvantula reasonably well, whether it be a Life Orb or a Specs variant. And Flamethrower is a potential to a KO on Galvantula. Now, as you can see, we do have Magic Coat. This is my go to lead in the game if she brings Galvantula. Why? Because I will go for Magic Coat, turn one, bounce back the Sticky Web. And that's what I mean by even the playing field. Yes, she can go for Sticky Web right after that. However, when both Pokemon are slow in the field, especially with the fact that I do have T-Wave support on this team, my Weavile will still be the fastest Pokemon, uh, bar her Flyers or Levitators like Latias and uh, Salamence. My Weavile will be the fastest Pokemon on the squad or on the team, even if Sticky Web is up on both sides. And like I said, I do have Thunder Wave support, so I can also... Paralyze Salamence is Latias still making Weavile faster than them, but uh, this is just another Pokemon to not give Ferrothorn any free turns But also to check Salamence as well get some backup checks for Salamence if it is like a DD Yachi variant um, I can Ice Beam break the Yachi and then Ice Shard to Revenge Killing. Now the next Pokemon on the team we have is uh, Fabio, we're bringing a special defensive uh, Mega Ampharos with Focus Blast, Volt Switch, Dragon Pulse, and Thunder Wave. No rest this week because we do have Wish support from Mondino. Basically, this Pokemon can eat up hits from Heat Ran as well as Mega Houndoom, even at plus two. Even Combine Verizion. Hit it with a Thunder Wave or hit it with a Focus Blast. Focus Blast just to hit Feral Thorn as well as Heat Ran. And Volt Switch just to keep up momentum. Also hit Jellicent for super effective damage while Dragon Pulse still hits hella hard even without any investment. It's still stronger. Uh, Fabio is still stronger than Latios without any investment in special attack. So we also have Thunder Wave because this thing can force switches. Maybe if a Spadef, a uh, Heatran, or a Muck wants to come in, or uh, anything 
um, Verizzi on anything. Thunder Wave just gives me that momentum out speeds. So I'll let my Weaver out speed because I am scared of Sticky Web. And uh, like I said, that's why I had Ardino. And obviously, with the Wish Support, I don't feel like I needed to rest on this thing. I do have Thunder Wave. And the last Pokemon on the team is my um, Shookaberry Cobalion. Now, the EV spread allows us to outspeed uh, Houndoom pre Evo as well as. Um, there's something else on the team. I feel like there was something else we outsped. Not only Houndoom. Is there anything else we outsped on this thing? I'm not sure. Why do I have this much speed? That doesn't make any sense to me. Because this thing should have more speed as well. But this is the speed we need. What the hell just happened down there? Alright, hold up. I'm trying to figure out why I have the speed. Because I want to know. I really want to know. Oh, yeah. Duh. Uh, it allows me to outspeed Salamence, uh, <laughs> duh. It allows me to outspeed Salamence, um, before Dragonance is up, if it's just a regular Salamence, and it allows me to Thunder Wave it. I also have Iron Head because I can break a max HP Salamence's sub, so if you run sub DD and has max HP, uh, 96 attack investment allows Iron Head to break that sub all the time, assuming there's no Intimidate. Close Combat is a 2 at KO on Feral Thorn, as well as doing about 80%. Uh, average to heat ran and of course we do have stealth rock I have shook berry just in case she dragon is up with that salamence and uh, she has a yachi berry so I can thunder wave on the earthquake because I live it because of the shook berry and then I can hit it with iron heads and then revenge kill with either Weavow or Ardino or something along those lines but this is just another backup check to the uh, salamence uh, while also being able to check Kalendoom pre Evo and um, just crippling her team I could potentially thunder wave Latias with this Cobalion and uh, hit it with iron has to do a bit of damage and yeah it's basically the team for this week a really quick breakdown i have nothing really else to say i do expect manaphy and weavile to put in some work uh, dino if she does bring galvantula i definitely do expect it to get up sticky webs uh with the magical just because it's like why wouldn't you go for sticky web i mean uh, magical is not that common on Ardino. i don't think it's that common actually let's uh let's see let's see what smogon has to say strategy ducks i haven't used Ardino enough to know Let's see what the uh, the regular Audino sets run. So let's get this out of the way. Get this all out of the way. Nope, I don't see no. Uh, hmm. Seems I don't see any uh, any. Oof, I don't see any magic coats. Maybe it's here. Let's uh, let's control magic coat. Oh, it looks like it's only in the. Uh, these options over here so there's no other options so yeah <laughs> any case that's why I'm gonna be running um, Magico I feel like it would definitely do work this game but hope you guys all enjoyed feel free to leave a like if you did stay tuned for the match and uh, yeah until next time guys later